addiction is all about trying to regulate your physiological state outside the realm of social interaction. So it's a replacement to regulate physiological state. So all you need to do is ask yourself, individuals who have addictions, how well do they use social interaction or friendship relationships as the regulator of their physiology? And you start getting the answer. They're doing it through an external source and not through the normal biological one, which is reciprocal interactions, co-regulation. So people who don't have trustworthy social interaction don't really have a, a possibility of, of, of that so much. Well, you're asking really, you're, it's a rhetorical question you're asking because you're in the world of addiction and you know already that most of them who come in for treatment, the vulnerability of, uh, in, in a sense, even dealing with the treatment is, do they have a network of relationships that are co-regulatory and can, I mean, in addiction, you might use the word support, but in polyvagal theory, we would say more reciprocal because the notion of support goes in one direction and a real relationship, you support and then you are supported. So it's that dialectic that bonds people and, and enables feelings of trust to spontaneously emerge. So in the world that you're working with in terms of the addiction, the simple question is, how trusting are these people of others in their life too? But they may feel that their journey has been a life of violation of trust. Right. So how, how do you work with that then, knowing that? What are some of the steps people can take? Uh, the rules are really relatively simple, and that is uh, the understanding of the physiological state we're in. So I guess the first rule is to honor and witness one's own physiological state. And for people who are addicted, part of the journey is not to feel your physiological state. Mm -hmm. So we, you could start, in a sense, with uh, a treatment model that had on the front end kind of a learning about one's own body learning to understand that intonation of voice is really a projection of physiological state because it's regulated through the vagus, a different part of the vagus than the one regulating your heart. Uh, facial expressivity is reflecting uh, physiological state too, uh, so that we start understanding that warm, acceptable voices and faces make us feel better. And as we feel better, we start having those types of voices and facial expressions. So we start learning from that. But I think the very first part is this awareness of the physiology of your gut feeling or your heart beating. And I think for many people who have very strong addictive tendencies, they've already numbed out that feedback circuit. They're, they're not really that aware of what's going on in their body. So in my own strategy, I want to really teach people about their own physiological responses. So uh, I want to do physiological monitoring where people can see their heart rate. They can do posture shifts. They can do breathing. And they can see that their body is responsive. And when it's in certain states, they have certain emergent properties, either being more accessible or more vulnerable, depending on how they feel about it, or feeling more aggressive. So breathing patterns can get people mobilized. Uh, and, and it can support their anger or it can calm them down. And they can see this in heart rate patterns and breathing patterns. So part of my strategy would be to uh, do a psychoeducation with physiological monitoring. Welcome to the 2021 Radical Recovery Summit presented by the Killaby Center for Recovery. This is Lynn Fraser, your moderator. This year, our theme is Feel It, Heal It a new paradigm of recovery, featuring a diverse group of thought leaders and innovators, people who are working on the ground in the new field of addiction recovery. Go to RadicalRecoverySummit.com to sign up and watch free.